head on killing each other off. They've developed some guerrilla um, tactics, some guerrilla strategies and ideologies and so forth. And we can't all come at the enemy from the same angle in the same direction. We have to come at the enemy from different angles and different directions. We have to develop some strategies and tactics. So who is the enemy? Who is the enemy? That's a good question. Because many of us, we fail to recognize friend from foe. It's, it's, we have a natural disposition towards our brothers and sisters, but we won't even uh, stand up and recognize who the enemy is. You know, you can see it's easy for a brother to kill another brother, but then, you know, I was in South Central Los Angeles a couple weeks ago. Brothers and brothers, they um, belong to these street tribes. It's easy for them to kill each other, but then you see two police officers have 10 of them lined up with their hands uh, behind their head. On, not a single fire shot. Not a single fire shot. So, friend from foe. My grandfather was asked this question. He said, are we fighting against the um, American power structure? No. He said, are we fighting against the English power structure, the French power structure? No. He said, we're fighting against the international Western global power structure. Yes. So we know we have a country, we have a continent like Africa. Africa is the richest continent in the world. There's no country richer than Africa. As a matter of fact, I had an uncle that was from Louisiana. So when I joined the party, my basic desire was to be a productive member of my community. I wanted to work on behalf of black people. So I set out to uh, educate myself and self-education and my political education classes in the party. We had a, a mandatory two hours a day when you had to read. And, uh, you had a list of books you had to read. You had to study them and you had to be ready to uh, run off the 10-point program of the Black Panther Party. You had to understand the rules of the party. The basic thing on the 10-point program was we want land, bread, housing, education, justice, and peace. If you don't want to give it to us, we'll take it. And so uh, being a young man, you don't have a sense enough to be afraid of nothing. So uh, it wasn't hard for me to get involved. Uh, by being in the party, I uh, organized in the community. The way we went about organizing that we walked through the whole neighborhood, and we knocked on every door in the neighborhood, and we asked people in the house, what do you want, what do you need in this community? We check off the list. So those are the things that we take back with us to work on. Uh, main thing is people are afraid of getting burglarized and houses being broken in. Uh, people snatching old people's purses and stuff. So we went to the people we knew who were doing this stuff, and we wrote to them and told them, if you want to do this, you take that shit to every hill. They got money. These people don't have to. So we basically ran them all out of town. The drug dealers and all of them. We ran them out of town and we started working for the community. First, we started off with a free breakfast program. We went to all the businesses, especially the ones that didn't live in our community, but took out of our community and took it back to their community to enhance their situation, to make their community rich and make ours poor. We go to the stores, on the corner stores, we tell them, we want three dozen eggs, we want some wheat. A white, uh, an African woman is three times more likely to die in childbirth than a white woman. And to me, in a country that tap that you know prides itself to having you know masterful medication and masterful Medicare for African women not to even be able to carry a baby to term is outrageous and it's and anybody who hears statistics like that should be outraged not to say oh well that sounds so bad but should be outraged here it is we are the people women african women gave life to every damn thing that walks on the planet That's right. That's right. everybody came through the womb of an african woman yeah. Yeah. and then we take care of the whole nation of white babies for the first 300 years that we're here and we can't even carry a baby to term, or have a baby that weighs more than five pounds, or have a baby that can survive through its first birthday. We have to say that this is the system's attack on us. We cannot see the crisis of healthcare as something separate from police brutality, or prison, the, 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 the outrageous incarceration rate of African men.
record contracts or to run a few punt returns back for touchdowns. They done fucked around and convinced y'all that Barack is the answer. But if he gets elected, another modern day American lynching is all that should be expected and they will mask its depiction like the first Thanksgiving. So waste your time in the lines if you want to. But the advice that I offer is buy a gun because you can and you ought to. Stop snitching to save your life. Cause I made a list, checked it twice, forget smile. More importantly, man, shout out to everybody who came and devoted their time and their resources to a good cause. All the proceeds from this event is going to go to towards healthcare programs in the community that that women and children are going to benefit from primarily. But anytime you deal with the women and the children, you deal with the whole community.